it's a very familiar story of the widow making an offering of all she has over against the wealthy giving a little and we know the story so well and how often we have drawn that message from it where we hold that uh, widow up as a wonderful example of a person who gives their all just as Jesus wants us all to give and it is a challenge take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee take my all in your service Lord and we have heard that message drawn from this passage the invitation that we give is to open up the possibility that we might see this in a different way if you were to apply the principles of source criticism to this passage you would notice that it also occurs in Luke and you would make comparisons you would look at the way Luke has used his source and you would pass some interesting comments the form critic would look at this particular pericope, this particular portion of text, and reflect on the way in which it has perhaps changed between Mark and Luke, and then draw some implications about the way in which it might have changed in the course of its transmission orally, and would seek to set it into the situation in life of Jesus, the situation in life of the church community that it's been passed on in. If you are a redaction critic, your interest would be to see how Mark uses this in the context of his uh, telling of the gospel story and how it's then modified by Luke and perhaps has subtly different emphases in Luke, which make for um, Luke's kind of take on this story. Uh, but we're interested at the moment in more recent approaches to this text. So if you're a narrative uh, critic, then you want to see how this story fits into the flow of the text at the moment and you'll notice how Mark is engaged in Jesus telling how Jesus goes into the temple, how he teaches and how he reflects and how he is encountering opposition from the different uh, sets of people who have different ways of responding to the situation that they're in at the moment as Jewish people. Pharisees linking up with Herodians, scribes who are part of that uh, authority base, part of the law base there in Jerusalem, uh, part of this kind of intelligentsia that's prepared to walk along with the Romans. A whole range of different people are engaging with Jesus at this point in controversy, out to try to tra trap Jesus. Um, the uh, rhetorical um, critic will be looking at ways in which um, this uh, is um, told in order to get a point across and what kind of um, uh, techniques are being used in that. And most interestingly, the social scientific critic will ask, well, who are these people? What is going on in Jerusalem? What 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 is a, a widow and they will make observations about uh, the stratification of Jerusalem society both within the Jewish world but also more particularly within the Roman world as well and that stratification of the of the Jewish society is one that uh, they are very very aware of um, and the social scientific critics will draw our attention to then a feminist writer a feminist theologian will ask but who is the widow what kind of role does she place where does she appear in this uh, stratified kind of society um, is she one who is cared for is she one who is in fact neglected at the bottom of the pile what is the position there and those are the kind of things they'll be on the lookout for so let's take a leaf out of the narrative theologian's book. Let's take into account the social scientific view. Let's see this through the eyes of the widow at the bottom of the pile, as it were, in Jerusalem society at this moment. And let's see how this passage plays out in that kind of way and in that kind of uh, instant. So I'm going to start the story this time at chapter 12, verse 38 see how the flow works in the narrative as it unfolds as Jesus taught he said so it's an initiative that Jesus takes in his teaching beware of the scribes 
who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honour at the banquets. Now notice that, that the whole kind of um, place that Scribe is playing gives means that they take the place of honour for themselves at banquets, not only in the religious sphere, but in the kind of banqueting that is right at the heart of a society that's in cahoots with the Roman power and engaging in that Roman kind of banqueting as well. What do they do, I wonder? Verse 40. They devour widows' houses. And for the sake of appearance, well, that, isn't that interesting? That a mark of what this strata of society is doing, represented by the scribes, who are wealthy and want places of honour at the banquet, is that they devour widows' houses. They are exploitative of the lowest rank in this society. If you take the kind of Herodian dynasty and their massive building works, there was an incredible amount of very hard exploited labour drawn on in order to achieve those building works. And among those maybe suffering were people who had their houses devoured by those who were at this wealthier end of the spectrum. And the mark is that they devour widows' houses. That's quite a strong way of putting it, as Jesus says. They say long prayers and they will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Notice no break. It is an artificial break imposed by the translators to have a heading there. And it's an artificial break even in the verse division. Originally there was no break. Just continual flow of narrative. He sits down. Many rich people put in large sums. Now, we've already noticed that the scribes like to be in the place of honour at the banquet. So they're among the rich. They're among the wealthy. And Jesus broadens it out here, making the observation that those who are on the top end, the wealthy, the rich, they love to come to this place. And he's sitting quite deliberately by the treasury. And they put in large sums. <laughs> They've got to, because that temple is an incredibly powerful place with an incredible cost to it. And it is new. It's not something that's an age-old tradition. This is Herod's temple, and it takes a lot of finance. And the finance is given by the generous largesse of the rich. And then a poor widow came. So it's not just a widow, it's a poor widow. So this is locating her at the bottom end of the strata of that society. And any study of Herodian Jerusalem and Roman society knows how stratified it is. And she puts in two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. Isn't that a disgrace? Is the implication in his voice suggest those who interpret the passage in this way? He's not holding her up as an example, but he's giving her as an instance of how widows' houses are devoured. This is how the rich do it, by imposing upon the poorest to give out of proportion in order to fund the horrendous needs of such a monstrosity as this incredible temple that should be a house of prayer and has been made into a den of thieves. And this is an instance of the thieving. Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And that, Jesus says to his disciples, is the disgrace of this temple. That's what makes it a den, a den of thieves. And uh, Jesus offers something so, so very different. And he's about to explore that difference and he's about to go to his cross and resurrection, living out that difference.